sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Mm. Oh, I'm oh crap! I'm recording. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Ethan Drew. We're doing another reaction and analysis video today, and this is going to be for Jeff Castellucci's version of Ain't No Sunshine by the late Bill Withers. Now, for those that do not know who I am, hey there, I'm Ethan Drew. I break down music. I help cultivate your appreciation for music through podcasts with singers, reaction and breakdown videos like these. That way you can get a better understanding of what's going on in the music. And I also do a little bit of music on my own. I just do that a little bit more on the side. But this is my primary content with interviews with singers, podcasts, etc. As well as breaking down what's going on in the music. Now, if you're enjoying the content, I would appreciate it if you would give me a like on this video. Drop a comment down below. Even if it's just a smiley face, it helps with the algorithm, makes these videos quicker to get on your feed and make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on so you never miss another upload. Now, if you are enjoying the content to the point of wanting to contribute further to my success here on YouTube, as well as in the music industry, there is a link in the description for my Patreon page where you can do that and you can support me as little as $1 a month if you want to. That is not required by any means. Subscriptions, likes, and comments help me, and those are completely free of charge. With that said, we're going to jump promptly into what Jeff has for us today. And I do need to clarify, I have heard this before quite a few times, and I love every minute of it. But I'm still going to do my best to break down what's going on in the music for you. Because that's what I do in these videos. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer for those who have never been to my channel before. I stop and talk about the music a lot. So if you don't like pausing, then my content of this type on my channel may not be for you. You might want to check out some other stuff or alternatively check out some other channels that don't pause. With that said, we're going to dive right in. I'm going to move my mic, get into a better position here. Pardon me. All right, so we are more or less ready to go. So the screen is right here that I'm going to be watching, and I will be turning to look at you guys as we go through this. So like I said, I've heard this before, so this is not a first-time reaction, but I'm going to do my best to show you what's going on in the music. And also, before we get started, I do want to call out the... Um, the outfit choice that Jeff has made for this music video, it matches perfectly to the the space that he has decided to film this video in, like in a very antique style, like early 1900s, 1800s style house. I love this. It's a very good choice for this, especially with the feel of the song. All right, enough jibber jabber. Let's get let's get right into this. Volume level is good. Let's do it. Pardon me. My sound has decided that it does not want to cooperate, cooperate, cooperate with me. So bear with me one second. There we go. So we can talk a couple diff we can talk a few different things about what's going on here at the very beginning. But Jeff has a Jeff has chosen to in his arrangement and performance of this has elected to stay in the same key of the original song, which would be A, the key of A. Which I think is fine. A lot of um a lot of cover artists will tend to change the key a little bit, maybe up or down a half step, or maybe even a whole step. Usually it's a bit of a personal preference. Um, sometimes they do it with the original artist in mind, just so that way, hey, look, I'm not performing a song in the same key as the original. 
So that way people don't think that I'm trying to steal the content. Sometimes that's usually the um, thought process behind it. Usually they will have a variety of reasons for that, but sometimes they will need to compensate for a note within that key that they can't quite hit, so they'll bring it down, or a note that's too low for them, so they'll bring it up a half step, so that way they don't have to do it quite so low or quite so high. It could be a couple different reasons outside of that as well, but by and large, that would be your reason why um, some key changes happen with cover artists like Jeff and some that don't change the key as well. So, But with Jeff having such a wide range anyway, he doesn't really need to change the key for that reason, at least. So with the music here at the beginning, we have a very soulful entrance. <laughs> So that's the original feel of the song. Now it's it's the rhythm is ever so slightly different. Of course, with a cover artist, you always want to be a little different if you're going to do something, if you're going to do a cover like this. But it just I love the the choice to start off with um, a four part harmony and doing this in into the intro of the song. <laughs> I love that. So, um, he also does that in the lead with his lower voice. So, very nice choice there. Um, I don't recall exactly how uh, Bill Withers starts off the song, or his original version, but we're going to keep going. I don't know what instrument that is in the background. Anyone that knows what instrument that is, let me know. I love it. That was a really good choice to start off as well. It's just... Jeff is really, really good with soul music, too. I mean, he's good with everything, but he did a really good job encapsulating the feel of the original song in just this little section right here alone and capturing the soul that this song really has in it. I love that little uh, bass lick there. There's a electronic synth bass in the background there that kicked in at a A1. That's not a vocal A1. That's just a synth bass. And for those that don't know, a synth is a um, is what we call a pad, and is typically played on an electronic keyboard. Um, it's typically a spinoff of the sound of a keyboard while being distorted or just sounding flat out different. Um, since we're very, very popular in the 80s, for those that are not that aware. That was a really, really uh, thick A1 scoop to start off the verse here. But it's like we know with Jeff, it goes without saying, he is more than capable of a A1 in chest, much less an everyday A1 and a very thick everyday A1. And when she's gone, it's not warm when she... Does anyone notice that hiss in the background of the music? Um, I believe that was a choice that was made to give it more of a record player style effect and sound to it. Um, that's because that's exactly what it sounds like. And... Obviously, this cover of the song is not a record player um, actual version of the song. It's literally playing on YouTube, and it plays on Apple Music just like this. That was definitely added in uh, in post-production when the song was being edited and stitched together. But I think it's a really nice touch to really make it feel like it's from the same time period that 
this song was saying by Bill Withers in. It's a nice little touch there for anyone that um, noticed that. He's away. There ain't no sunshine. All right. All right. So that was a bit of a vocal fry scoop. And for those that don't know what a vocal, what vocal fry is, it's a bit of a popping of the vocal cords. Ah, ah, ah. That's that's a vocal fry pop, or that's just vocal fry, right? So a lot of this is a very popular technique in country music. Particularly one to note that does this would be Josh Turner. Give his visit music a, a listen. Um, he has a very good example of this, but Jeff does it a lot too. Uh, uh, or, and, um, I think Tim Faust of Home Free also does the same thing too, pretty regularly, but, um, it's a really good way to, to scoop into a line and it gives it a little bit more soul, a little bit more a depth, a depth of sound and variation. And when she's gone, and this house just ain't no home, anytime she goes away, And that's just such a relaxed C2, bass low C2. It just... He just relaxes into it so easily, and it's it's got a little bit of air behind it, which is a good indicator that he's not even really trying to hit this note. It just kind of flows and happens. He just, like, he, he has it easily, and he can just slide down to it with pretty much no effort at all. And I like the choice of doing just a kick and clap for percussion in this in this version of the song too because the original actually does a, a normal drum set if you will so also another very nice variation and uh musical choice in his arrangement here she goes away. two things to talk about here and it's a uh uh she goes away i love that choppiness there that is not in the original, but it's such a nice little touch and it makes you sit up and take notice because he's about to hit you with some more musical magic. And it's, I love that part. So let's listen to that again. Anytime she goes away. she goes away. Same effect as what I was talking about with the C2, or the bass C2 a second ago. He does it the same again here with this A1 in chest. And it's just so smooth and buttery, and I love the velvety, smooth bass there. There ain't no sun. There ain't no sun. I like that um, offbeat, because that's also not in the original from what I understand. Nice touch. I just love this man because it's just I I I love the nod to the original while giving it its own rhythm because I know 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 I I love the nod to the original but being an octave down and just it's such a nice choice it honors the original but it's it's its own thing yeah yeah i love that for those that have a keen ear did you notice in this part right here i'll point it out to you that right there did you notice that the bass is cut out let me know if you did notice that I wonder this time where she's gone. now we get a taste of jeff's higher range here I wonder if she's gonna stay. <laughs> so it's a little bit of up and down with jeff's voice in this little area, but I think it's a good way to show or showcase Jeff's range 
because he goes an octave up and he goes, I wonder if. Hold on, right, literally right here. I wonder where this time she's gone. I'm wishing she's, she's gone. gone. Whoa, whoa. And it's just. His high range is so clean. It's amazing. So, I mean, you've got a man that could literally do everything when it comes to singing. And then he's just up here, an octave above from where he was just singing. Then he goes back down to that fat A1 in chest. This one is a lot less airy and it has a lot more power and resonance to it. Whoa, I wonder if she's gonna stay. She's gone. That's, uh, I believe, a four part harmony there, and that's a beautiful little touch. Oh, she's always gone too long. Anytime. She goes away. Anytime. Low C2 again. I know, 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 I know. Okay, a couple things to talk about here real quick. So. There's a bit of a uh, quick break in the background vocals here. I'm not sure if you noticed, but right here where I paused is where it starts. And as the camera of the video, or the music video starts coming into focus, you can notice a quick break in the background vocals. Very nice touch. And then listen to the bass part in the background aside from the actual lead. Jeff slams another powerful A1 in chest, but this time in the background, not in the lead part. Nice choice there to keep showing off the lead part while still maintaining a bit of warmth and power in the bass in the background. Very nice choice. I know, 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 I know. Okay, so that first I know section he did, I know, I know, I know, I know, in in that octave above, now he's doing it back down an octave for where he was at the beginning of the song. I know, I know, I know. No, I know, I know, I know. And then he he takes Instead of going up, I know, he goes, I know, I know. He goes to a G1 in chest and then an A1 in chest instead of a G2 and an A2. <laughs> it's just another showcase of Jeff's range. We love his voice because he's got such a nice range and so much warmth to his voice. I love it. And go back and we're going to listen to these fat low notes in this I know section again. Back to high again. He's just got so much control up there. Let's see, so in that three-part harmony, when I believe that's the highest he went for the higher part in that. I was just curious to see how high he went there. And it sounds like he went to an A4 in chest, which <laughs> it's impressive for a bass singer for those that don't know. It's crazy. Listen to this riff. We've got a B4 mixed voice from Jeff here in the background. That might be a C. Let me double check. Yeah, that's a B. Never mind. Sorry. Ooh, so that's that that chord doesn't normally belong within this key, the a, key of A. That's a 
Mm, what kind of key? What kind of chord is that? Key of key of D. It's a D chord of some kind. It's and then he descends to a G G G. Um, I'm not sure, guys. If you are a chord freaks, uh, let me know what chord he does there in that little section. Slides down to the G one in chest. Immaculate, as always. That background voice there. For those that don't know, that is the sound of a pitched down voice. And what I mean by a pitched down voice is whenever you take a voice recording inside of a what we call a DAW, a digital audio workstation, um, and you physically take the pitch of the actual voice and you pitch it down a few notes, it gives this more of a dark, dark, cavernous sound instead of being like the normal sound. You're like, ah, uh, it would sound more like, oh, uh. it's it definitely doesn't sound human. And the the more you the lower you go when you pitch a voice down the more it will sound like that. And the same, the reverse is also true with pitching a voice up. For those that don't know, there's no pitched up voices in this recording, but if you ever hear, like, say, uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, um, if you want to know a little bit of insight as to how they achieve that really high-pitched sound whenever they're singing, those are original people singing. But what they'll do is they'll pitch their voices up a significant amount and then it gives it that really high, whiny tone to it and makes it sound like chipmunks. You get the idea. That's, that's how they achieve that. Anytime. Anytime. You just, you, you can't beat that. I just love that richness. And one more thing to mention real quick is the 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 choice to go up and down in volume and in power throughout this piece to move with the music with your volume and your power it gives it more movement more feel makes it makes you want to flow more with the music for like a better phrases because it's just it gives it more life if you will Instead of just one, anytime throughout the the same way the entire song, because it doesn't give you anywhere to start, it doesn't give you anywhere to finish, and it makes it more boring and less enticing for your viewers and listeners to listen to and watch. So Jeff is the master of keeping his people engaged and on their toes. immaculate performance and cover of this song um i did have one thing i wanted to mention that i never actually spoke about through the entire cover and that was the fact that there is a bit of a tick in the background to help with the time and the percussion i don't know exactly what that tick is and i am reminded of what a ticking clock sounds like with that sound but I can't confirm if that's actually the the sound that's taking place in this recording. But it's a very nice little touch. It's subtle, but it gives it even more soul, if you ask me. And I, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing touch. Let's listen to the Jeff message at the end here. Oh no, this is just a uh, credits. Fantabulous. Absolutely 
amazing. Folks, this was two years ago, and I feel bad for just now getting to it, but very much appreciate your patience in this matter. Um, I had been meaning to get to this one for a while, and I've just, for lack of better terms or phrases, just been slacking uh, on getting to this, but... Thank you for your patience. Um, I really enjoyed this song and I also very much enjoyed being able to break down what's going on in it for you. And I hope you walk away with a better understanding of it and a better appreciation for it and Jeff's music through this. Guys, like I said, if you are enjoying the content, you like this video, make sure you like it. Drop a comment down below. If it's just a smiley face, it helps with the algorithm. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed yet where I can, that way you can enjoy more musical breakdowns some podcasts with some uh, friends in the music industry some singers and yeah guys i'm signing off for the day i love you take care of yourselves and we will see you in the next one bye ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in today this video was made possible by wonderful patrons like miss nancy flesher if you're interested in getting audio shout outs or video shout outs at the end of my videos, make sure you hit the link in my description to go to Patreon where you have that ability. Thank you so much for watching again. I love you. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you soon.